There are three main groups that we have treaties for. The Dalish Elves, the Dwarves of Orzammar, and the Circle of Magi. I also still think that Arleman is our best bet for help. We might even want to go to him first. Milady, I never thought I would see you again. Let me introduce myself. I am Liliana. I know after what happened, you will need all the help you can get. That's why I'm coming along. Set me free and I will follow you against the Blight. And so it is done. I will follow you into battle. In doing so, I shall find my atonement. Bad dreams, huh? Well, it is real, sort of. You see, part of being a Grey Warden is being able to hear the Darkspawn. That's what your dream was, hearing them. The Archdemon, it talks to the Horde, and we feel it just as they do. That's why we know this is really a blight. I don't know if it's really a dragon, but it sure looks like one. But yes, that's the Archdemon. It takes a bit, but eventually you can block the dreams out. Some of the older Grey Wardens say they can understand the Archdemon a bit, but I sure can't. Anyhow, when I heard you thrashing around, I thought I should tell you. It was scary at first for me, too. That's what I'm here for. To deliver unpleasant news and witty one-liners. Anyhow, you're up now, right? Let's pull up camp and get a move on. What do you need? You don't have to do that. I know you didn't know him as long as I did. I... I should have handled it better. Duncan warned me right from the beginning that this could happen. Any of us could die in battle. I shouldn't have lost it, not when so much is riding on us, not with the blight and... and everything. I'm sorry. I'd like to have a proper funeral for him. Maybe once this is all done, if we're still alive. I don't think he had any family to speak of. I don't know. I have no idea what the Grey Wardens do for them when they fall in battle. Have you had someone close to you die? Not that I mean to pry, I'm just... Oh, oh, of course. How stupid of me to forget. Here I am going on and on about Duncan and you... I am so sorry. Thank you. Really, I mean it. It was good to talk about it, at least a little. I'd like that. So would he, I think. Yes? Well, here I am. I knew this would come up sooner or later. I don't know how to explain, but I had a dream. In it, there was an impenetrable darkness. It was so dense, so real. And there was a noise, a terrible, ungodly noise. I stood on a peak and watched as the darkness consumed everything. And when the storm swallowed the last of the sun's light, I... I fell. And the darkness drew me in. When I woke, I went to the Chantry's gardens, as I always do. But that day, the rose bush in the corner had flowered. Everyone knew that bush was dead. It was grey and twisted and gnarled, the ugliest thing you ever saw. But there it was, a single beautiful rose. It was as though the maker stretched out his hand to say, even in the midst of this darkness, there is hope and beauty. 
have faith. In my dream, I fell, or, or maybe I jumped. I'd do anything to stop the blight. I know that we can do it. There are so many good things in the Maker's world. How can I sit by while the blight devours everything? That is why you are a Grey Warden. Come, there's a blight to stop. Yes? What can I do for you? Of course. My lady, your mother did not survive. I am so very sorry. I do not wish to burden you any further with this. Both your parents died that day. I must admit, I cannot give you many details. They had already dragged me outside, and I was half conscious. But I saw soldiers dragging your parents' bodies out. The Arl looked at them briefly, gave a sign. The servants took them and put them next to the rest of the bodies. They were burnt along with the rest. Please, please do not. The town and Tanner loved you, and I'm sure they'd be relieved that you were saved by their sacrifice. Why are we stopping? There are dark spawn to be fought. Is this delay needful? I am Kunari. I have given my word to aid you. We are not people of idle promises. No. People are not simple. They cannot be summarized for easy reference in the manner of the elves are a lithe, pointy-eared people who excel at poverty. I am. I have always fought in war, human. My people have been at war since the moment we set foot in the Northern Islands. We do now. Somewhere else. No. I was born in Saharan. Of the land we came from, I know nothing, not even its name. I do not see how this matters. Seheron and Parvolan are distant. Ferelden and the Darkspawn are immediate. You are concerned. No need. I am fit enough to fight. As you wish. What do you wish of me? If you must. Why do you ask me such questions? I do not probe you for pointless information, do I? <laughs> oh, what luck. What is it you asked if I grew up in the wilds? A curious question. Where else would you picture me? For many years it was simply Flemeth and I. The wilds and its creatures were more real to me than Flemeth's tales of the world of man. In time, I grew curious. I left the wilds to explore what lay beyond, never for long. Brief forays into a civilized wilderness. For the most part, Flemeth taught me well. For all that I had been taught, however, the truth of the civilized lands proved to be... overwhelming. I was unfamiliar with so much. So confident and bold was I, yet there was much that Flemeth could never have prepared me for. I rather doubt that. Only once was I accused of being a witch of the wilds, and that by a chastened who happened to be travelling with a merchant caravan. He pointed and gasped, and began shouting in his strange language, and most assumed he was casting some curse upon me. I acted the terrified girl, and naturally, he was arrested. Men are always willing to believe two things about a woman. One, that she is weak, and two, that she finds him attractive. 
I played the weakling and battered my eyelashes at the captain of the guard. <laughs> Child's play. The point being that I was able to move through human lands fairly easily. Whatever humans think a witch of the wild looks like, tis not I. Not that I did not have trouble. There are things about human society which have always puzzled me, such as the touching. Why all the touching for a simple greeting? To begin with, yes. What is the point of touching my hand? I find it an offensive intrusion. There were many nuances that Flemeth could never tell me of. When to look into another's eyes. How to eat at a table. How to bargain without offending. None of these things I knew. I still do not understand it all, truth be told. But then I gave up long ago any hope of doing so. When I returned to the wilds last, I swore to Flemeth that I had no intention of leaving again. Yes, here I am. Well, let's get on with it before the ground opens up and swallows us, yes? Ah, it's good to see you, my timely rescuer. Bodon Fedic, at your service, once again. I saw your camp and thought to myself, what safer place to rest for the evening than in the camp of a Grey Warden? I'm perfectly willing to offer you a fine discount for the inconvenience of our presence. How does that sound? Good? Yes? Anything, everything, but all of the finest quality. No cheap trinkets here. And my boy Sandal happens to be a bit of a hand with enchantments. Oh, yes. Sadly, it also makes us a target for bandits and the like. If there were spare hands to hire as guards, I would have done so long ago. I'm sure you'll be pleased with the goods my boy and I have collected, and with your discount. Look, can we talk for a moment? I need to tell you something. I um, should probably have told you earlier. I don't know. I doubt it. I've never liked it, that's for sure. Well, uh, let's see. How do I tell you this? We're almost at Redcliffe. Did I say how I know Arl Eamon exactly? I'm a bastard. My mother was a serving girl at Redcliffe Castle, and she died when I was born. Our Lehman took me in and raised me before I was sent to the Chantry. The reason he did that was because, well, because my father was King Marek, which made Caelan my half-brother, I suppose. How? When would I say that? Oh, by the way, King Merrick had sex with a servant and she produced a bastard son. That's me. I would have told you, but it never really meant anything to me. I was inconvenient, a possible threat to Kaelin's rule, and so they kept me secret. I'd never talked about it to anyone. Everyone who knew either resented me for it or they coddled me. Even Duncan kept me out of the fighting because of it. I didn't want you to know as long as possible. I'm sorry. Oh, good. I'm glad. It's not like I got special treatment for it anyhow. Al Eamon eventually married a young woman from Orlais, despite all the problems it caused with the king so soon after the war. He loved her a great deal. Anyway, the new Arlesa resented the rumors which pegged me as the Arl's bastard. They weren't true, but of course they existed. The Arl didn't care, but she did. So off I was packed to the nearest monastery at age 10. Just as well. The Arlesa made sure the castle wasn't a home to me by that point. She despised me. Maybe. She felt threatened by my presence. I can see that now. I can't say I blame her. She wondered if the rumors were true herself, I bet. I remember I had an amulet with Andraste's holy symbol on it. The only thing I had of my mother's. I was so furious at being sent away, I tore it off and threw it at the wall. 
and it shattered. Stupid, stupid thing to do. The owl came by the monastery a few times to see how I was, but I was stubborn. I hated it there and blamed him for everything. And eventually, he just stopped coming. My blood has never been important to me. I've spent my whole life trying to forget about it and being told that I would never sit on the throne. And that's fine by me. No, if there's an heir to be found, it's Arl Eamon himself. He's not of royal blood, but he is Caelan's uncle, and more importantly, very popular with the people. So there you have it. Now can we move on? And I'll just pretend you still think I'm some nobody who was too lucky to die with the rest of the Grey Wardens. Oh, lovely. I'm going to regret this. Somehow I just know it. I thought I saw travelers coming down the road, though I scarcely believed it. Have you come to help us? So you... you don't know? Has nobody out there heard? We're under attack. Monsters come out of the castle every night and attack us until dawn. Everyone's been fighting and dying. Apparently everyone seems to agree that a blight is the perfect time to start killing each other. Marvelous, really. We've no army to defend us. No Arl and no king to send us help. So many are dead. And those left are terrified they're next. No Arl? What happened to Arl Eamon? What is going on? He's deathly ill. And we don't even know if he's still alive. We haven't heard from the castle in days. I should take you to Ban Tegan. He's all that's holding us together. He'll want to see you. Ban Tegan, our Lehman's brother. He's here. Yes. It's not far, if you'll come with me. And who are these people with you? They are obviously not simple travelers. No, my lord. They just arrived, and I thought you would want to see them. Well done, Thomas. Greetings, friends. My name is Tegan, Ban of Rainersphere, brother to the Arl. I remember you, Ban Tegan. Though the last time we met, I was a lot younger and covered in mud. Covered in mud? Alistair? It is you, isn't it? You're alive! This is wonderful news! Still alive, yes. Though not for long, if Tern Loghain has anything to say about it. Indeed. Loghain would have us believe all Grey Wardens died along with my nephew, amongst other things. What, that he pulled his men in order to save them? That Caelan risked everything in the name of glory? <laughs> Hardly. Loghain calls the Grey Wardens traitors, murderers of the King. I don't believe it. It is an act of a desperate man. So, you are a Grey Warden as well? Is it possible we've met? You seem very familiar. Ah, yes, that's it, exactly. A pleasure to meet you indeed, though I wish it were under better circumstances. You're here to see my brother. Unfortunately, that might be a problem. Eamon is gravely ill. No one has heard from the castle in days. No guards patrol the walls, and no one has responded to my shouts. The attack started a few nights ago. Evil things surged from the castle. We drove them back, but many perished during the assault. Some call them the walking dead, decomposing corpses, returning to life with a hunger for human flesh. They hit again the next night. Each night they come with greater numbers. With Caelan dead and Loghain starting a war over the throne, no one responds to my urgent calls for help. I have a feeling tonight's assault will be the worst yet. Alistair, I hate to ask, but I desperately need the help of you and your friends. It isn't just up to me. Though the Grey Wardens don't stand much chance against Loghain without Arl Eamon. Help. 
pointless to help these villagers fight an impossible battle. One would think we had enough to contend with elsewhere. Thank you, thank you. This means more to me than you can guess. Thomas, please tell Murdoch what transpired. Then return to your post. Yes, my lord. Now then, there is much to do before night falls. I put two men in charge of the defense outside. Murdoch, the village mayor, is outside the Chantry. Sir Perth, one of Eamon's knights, is just up the cliff at the windmill, watching the castle. You may discuss with them the preparations for the coming battle. Very well. Luck be with you, my friend. Ah, fresh air. It was difficult to breathe within, with all that self-righteousness crowding the air. You know, we don't have the men. no sign of them coming back from the castle, Murdoch. So you're the Grey Warden, are you? I didn't think they made women Grey Wardens. For more reasons than you care to hear, I bet. Still, there's no reason to think Van Tegan's lost his mind. We aren't gonna turn aside anyone who wants to help, though. Don't take me for being an ingrate or nothing. Well, we do want to help however we can. You can trust us. Name's Murdoch, mayor of what's left of the village, providing we aren't all killed and hauled off to the castle tonight. I... I hope you're right. I've been trying to hold us together, but it isn't easy. Anyhow, you're here, and they tell me you're in charge. We need what little armor and weapons we got repaired, and quickly, or half of us will be fighting without either. Owen's the only blacksmith who can do it, but the stubborn fool refuses to even talk. If we're to be ready for tonight, we'll need that crotchety bastard's help. His daughter, Valena, is one of the Alessa's maids, so he hasn't heard from her since this whole business started. He demanded we attack the castle, break down the gate, and force our way in. I said it was impossible, but he wouldn't listen. He's locked himself in the smithy now. I can't force him to do repairs. He said he'd rather die first. I'd appreciate it. If he doesn't help, he'll die like the rest of us. What good will that do anyone then? Go away. Curse you. Leave me in peace. You've already taken everything out of my stores. There's nothing left. Huh? Who is that? What do you want? I've been through enough. Hmm? All right, all right. Let me undo the locks. All I ask is that you don't make any trouble. Make his breath. What is that smell? It's like someone set a brewery on fire. Somebody's been drinking. So I let you in. You wanted to talk. Now we're talking. Mind telling me who you are? A Grey Warden, is it? <laughs> It takes all kinds. Anyhow, my name's Owen, though you might already know that. Care to join me as I get besotted? Or is there something in particular you wanted? Why should I help Murdoch when he won't help me? Hmm? My girl, Felena. Is one of the Alessa's maids, and she's trapped up there in the castle, but the mayor won't send anyone for her. She's been my life since my wife passed on two years ago. Now she's dead, or soon to be. I don't care what happens to me, or the village, or anyone! It'd do me the world of good to think maybe someone like you could go with and find her. Provided any of us live through the night. If you look for Valena, I'll reopen the smithy and make some repairs for the militia. I can do that much. Not good enough. Murdoch said the same damn thing, and I didn't believe him either. 
You are asking a great deal, you wretched little man. I want to promise. Promise me that you'll look for her. That you'll bring her back to me if you can. I'll accept that. It's something to hope for, at least. Oh, lovely. Shall we next begin rescuing kittens from trees? Right then. It seems I have some work to do relighting the forge, and I suppose I'll have to find some iron. Hmm, maybe at the mill. Oh, Murdoch just better send his men here as soon as possible if I'm going to get to all these repairs and get them done by nightfall. If you need anything done, well, just let me know. I've got a lot to do now, so you'll have to excuse me. There's one thing I do not understand, Alistair. Just the one thing? About you, perhaps. Why the deception over your parentage? I'd figure you'd be the sort who knows all about deception. I do. And what use the deception might have had ended when King Caelan perished, did it not? Maybe. I guess I was sort of hoping that would go away. The truth does not go away. I didn't say it was a good threat. Greetings, Grey Warden. I am as relieved as Ban Tegan is to see you here. I must admit I do not know quite how to address you. Is my lady sufficient? As you wish, and thank you kindly. I am Sir Perth, until recently in direct service of Arl Eamon of Redcliffe. For now my charge is defending the village from these evil assaults. Would that I had chosen not to seek out the urn of sacred ashes. Perhaps I would have fended off whatever evil befell the castle. Or perhaps I would be dead. Oh well, with a great warden aiding our defense, perhaps all is not lost. There is still time before the sun goes down. If you have not yet spoken to Murdoch, or if there is anything you have planned... Good luck to you then, and may the Maker watch over us all.